What is up, everyone? It's time for yet another episode of Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. And here we go. It's episode 97. And today, we're going to talk about legendary and recently controversial martial artist, Steven Seagal. I'm Whistle Kick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistle Kick, if you don't know, makes the absolute best sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back again. If you're not familiar with our products, you can learn more or buy over at whistlekick.com. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a lot more are on another website, and that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From either site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I really suggest you do so, because we offer some exclusive content to subscribers, some great discounts, and it's the only place to find out about the upcoming guests for the Monday shows. So like I said, today's episode is about Steven Seagal. Now, I made that comment about him being controversial, and that's really tied to one specific incident that got a lot of play on not just social media, but conventional media during a recent visit to Russia where Steven Seagal was doing some demonstrations. And at least from what we can tell with the video, it looked pretty awful. It looked fake. Right. And so I've hesitated whether or not we should do an episode on Steven Seagal because of that. Should we accept who he is now and and talk about where he started and, and really give you the full treatment like we've done with other episodes? Should we exclude that part out of respect to him and what he's done or just not do anything entirely? And honestly, I've been considering this episode for a few months now and really just decided, you know what, it's unfair to the listeners and to who Steven Seagal is to not present him in his entirety. So that's what we're going to do here today. Steven Seagal was born in 1952 in Lansing, Michigan. So there's some different stories about how Seagal started his martial arts training and they're kind of conflicting. And so the two most popular ones one says that he started training at age seven under Fumio Demora, which doesn't really seem to add up. But another one says that he started learning Shotokan karate from a cook at a restaurant that he started working at when he was only 13. He actually lied to get a dishwashing job and met this cook. His family moved him to California and he started Aikido training in the 60s under Harry Ishisaka, who was one of the pioneers of Aikido in the United States. Seagal is fluent in Japanese and was even the first non-Japanese person to operate in Aikido Dojo in Japan. His school, Aikido Tenshin Dojo, is in Osaka, and it looks like it's still in operation today. And this was pretty early in his life. It was before he had moved to LA and been discovered and started his movie career. After founding the dojo, he did move back to California, and it wasn't with the intent of getting into acting or anything like that, but he was living near Hollywood. And around the time he earned his seventh don in Aikido, he was taking on a lot of private students, and some of them were famous, and one of them was Michael Ovitz. And Ovitz was a Hollywood agent who had represented Tom Cruise, John Belushi, Steven Spielberg, and a whole bunch of other names that we won't rattle off, because you kind of get the point. He was a big deal. And so this guy really saw some potential in Seagal and wanted to put him into movies. And so that was what led to Seagal's 1988 debut, the movie that a lot of people consider his best, Above the Law. And he followed that up with Hard to Kill and a few others before starring in what was really the most popular and the most critically acclaimed role, the one he had starring in the 1992 film Under Siege. His success also contributed to his demise. As he grew in popularity, he was given more control over his movie projects And with that control, he started to put more and more of his personal beliefs into the films. Environmental and spiritual elements became a big part of his movies. And a lot of his fans struggled with the commentary that was smack in the middle of their martial arts and action film sandwich that were the movies that they had become used to from him. His next few films had him saving an indigenous population in the movie On Deadly Ground, the environment in the movie Fire Down Below, And then in the movie The Patriot, he kicked it up a notch with him saving the world from a lethal virus in the hands of a terrorist group. 
Between 1998 and 2014, he starred in 27 different films, and all but three of them were direct-to-video. One of them was the film Machete in 2010, where he played the villain. Now, he was actually involved in the movie industry before he started acting. In 1983, he was working with Sean Connery on the James Bond film, Never Say Never Again, and he was teaching Connery some martial arts for the film when he broke his wrist. Yeah, Seagal broke Connery's wrist. <laughs> Seagal's good friends with Jackie Chan, and Jackie Chan actually offered him the role as the villain in Rush Hour 3, but he turned it down. He's not just a one-trick martial arts pony, so to speak. He's, he's more than Aikido. He's a master swordsman, has a huge sword collection, and he has black belts in karate and judo. If you follow Seagal online or you're a fan of reality TV, you may know that he has spent more than 20 years as a police officer, originally in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, and then later in Maricopa County, Arizona. And the reason that I say reality TV is that Steven Seagal, as a police officer, has been turned into a TV series called Steven Seagal Lawman. They filmed three seasons, and unfortunately, the last one was released in 2014, and it doesn't look like we're getting new episodes out of that. But um, if you have the chance to check it out, it's kind of ridiculous, and you probably should give it a whirl, even just to say that you have. Now, he got into law enforcement originally as an instructor. He was teaching martial arts and marksmanship to some of the deputies near his home in Louisiana. And the sheriff was really impressed with his skills. And so impressed, he actually asked him to join the force. Seagal graduated from the police academy in LA, and he's been a police officer in, again, first Louisiana and then later Arizona ever since. In addition to being a tremendous martial artist, he's also an accomplished guitarist. And he's released two studio albums and worked with a number of other musicians, including Stevie Wonder. Some of his music has shown up in his movies, including Fire Down Below, Into the Sun, and Ticker. And he spent the summer of 2006 touring the U.S. and Europe with his band Thunderbox. He's got a huge guitar collection, and some of his guitars were owned by some pretty prominent people. And again, shortening a list here, B.B. King, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Buddy Guy, and Jimi Hendrix. Seagal hosted Saturday Night Live back in 1991, and David Spade has said publicly that Seagal was the worst host he ever saw. He claimed he was humorless, mean to the cast, and wouldn't do a Hans and Franz sketch because the premise involved the characters Hans and Franz saying that they could beat up Seagal. And producer Lauren Michaels has actually come out and backed up these statements, and we start to get a picture here of Seagal maybe not being the nicest guy. Now, just about a month ago, the website Reddit, which is kind of a social discussion website, if you're not familiar, hosted something that they call an AMA, Ask Me Anything, with Seagal. And this website's done a bunch of these. And usually the way it works is famous people will say, hey, ask me anything. And people will ask them questions. And of course, it's the internet. So people will ask some less than nice things, but those tend to get ignored and the celebrity will answer the questions, or at least the legitimate ones. Seagal's was a disaster pretty much from the get-go, and he bailed after a pretty short period of time, about 20 minutes. These things usually go much longer, and the entire thing is hysterical, and it's worth reading, and unfortunately, it's not very nice, but we, in the comments, get some people that seem pretty legitimate in what they're saying about Seagal, some behind the scenes information that I'm not going to quote here, but check it out. We'll link in the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I do want to caution you though, it's got some pretty inappropriate language. In January of this year, 2016, he became a citizen of Serbia, where he was asked to train the special forces. He's also good friends with Russian President Vladimir Putin, and even once called him, and unfortunately I'm quoting here, one of the great living world leaders. And there's actually a lot of other kind of political stuff that's gone on involving Seagal that kind of stretches what, you know, we talk about here on martial arts radio. But um, 
it, it does paint an interesting picture, especially when we consider that relationship with Putin. So now you know way more about Steven Seagal than you thought there was to know, right? He's on Twitter, uh, S. Seagal Official, if you want to follow him there. I am, because after learning all of these things that I did in doing the research for this episode, why would I not? Now you can get to us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. Username is always Whistlekick. You can leave us comments uh, there on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if there's something you think you want to hear on a topic episode or someone that you want to suggest for an interview, go ahead, fill out the form at the website, and we'll get it, and we'll go from there. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter, download or subscribe uh, with the apps that we've got. And that's really about it. You can learn more about the products at whistlekick.com and the Spartan Gears on Amazon. And I'm rambling, so it's time to say goodbye. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.